Hi, my name is Jesse James Allen, and this is a presentation I had made for the Georgia Game Developers Association called Your Creative Journey. This presentation is really geared for those who are just getting into the creative industry or a couple of years in and still seeking a little bit of direction. This is just some insight from my 30 year journey into the creative space, as well as some tips I've learned from others that really stuck with me. I hope you find this inspiring. My very first tip is you are in training for a job that does not yet exist. Now, when I was getting my start in the industry, I was still working with analog mixing equipment and cutting tape and that kind of stuff. Digital technology was just starting to become a thing, but I was experimenting a lot with digital samplers and whatnot. It is not that different from those of you who right now are maybe experimenting with real-time technologies, stuff that is emerging onto the scene that is absolutely going to change the face of the industry, but it's still in its infancy. So think of it as like you are learning this emerging thing that someday might be your career, but you can also learn a lot of the legacy things, the fundamentals, how to make a good movie, how to program a good game, how to write a good story. Those things will always be your fundamentals to build on. The next screen is follow your curiosity. Maybe you're just making your first video game or maybe you're shooting your very first film. Those are things that you're interested in and it kind of pulls you into the knowledge of learning how to become better at that and how to refine it. Sometimes you'll be interested in things that don't even seem to connect. But later on in your career, you're like, hey, I'm super happy I learned X, Y and Z because collectively they have given me the opportunity to do something extraordinary. The next piece of advice here comes from a great Orlando speaker by the name of Colney Smith. It says, do not wait for approval to succeed or do not wait for permission to succeed, as, as he's put it. And I love the idea behind it. So many people believe that, you know, once I get a job in the game industry, I can make the game that I've always wanted to make. Or once I get that film contract, I can make the perfect movie. When it comes to chasing your dreams and creating really amazing things, you may or may not ever get that chance. Instead of waiting for some gatekeeper to say, okay, you have the chance to go explore the things that you are the most passionate about in life, you should just start doing that right away at any level that you possibly can. Yeah, maybe you can't shoot a feature film right now on your budget or with your equipment or whatever, but you got some cool ideas. Start cranking out some little one minute Instagram videos that kind of like peck away at this. Or maybe you would like to release an album or something like that, but you just don't have the chops. Maybe you just create a good single. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that you keep at it with these small things. They're collectively going to turn into larger things for you in your future. So when that opportunity arises, whether it's with a company or with a client, you can show this really massive portfolio of all these different skills and abilities that you have and it's easy for them to look through that and get an idea of what your creative potential is. The moral of this story is that you are leading your own success. You are not playing a secondary character in the story of your life. This next one is one that uh, I have said this so many times on various forums. Own the idea, rent everything else. Most people that get into any kind of creative industry, especially filmmakers, kind of believe that you need to buy $30,000 worth of cameras and lenses and batteries and holders and computers and all this stuff, then they can finally make a quality film or video. And this is true, like I said, not just with filmmakers. I mean, I've, music guys are definitely in the same boat. They're, they just kind of assume you need this like mega studio to be able to produce a hit record. That idea is absolutely false. And if you think about it, it, it's actually kind of funny. Like the director of Harry Potter or Michael Bay or something, they don't just own all of that equipment and say, OK, I finally have all my gear. Let's go make this movie. No, they're renting it from the studio or from third parties that support the studio. Right. And they're also renting in the expertise to operate a lot of that equipment and set it up. If you took ten thousand dollars and instead of just buying nothing but gear with that, but you invested in renting that equipment and getting some crew that can assist you with that, I absolutely guarantee your production is going to go way better and come out at a much higher quality than if you would have just like bought all that gear and gone through the learning curve. Now, I guess the thought is that, but I will always have it and I can make more productions after this one. 
there is some truth to that. But really, when it comes to technology, so much of it goes so obsolete within two or three years that you're going to want something new anyway. And I cannot tell you how many people just have tons and tons of equipment and really have produced nothing. They're kind of like paralyzed by gear acquisition syndrome is what that is actually called. Take the time and invest the money into the projects and the ideas. You are going to get so much further. This next one is persistence is greater than talent. Now, this is something that I actually learned in ninjutsu, believe it or not. As I said earlier, when we were talking about don't wait for approval to succeed, I said maybe you should make, you know, those little 60 second films or the the single instead of the entire album on a music project. If you keep doing that, we'll be like super conservative. OK, let's say you keep doing these things like once every two months. Still, within a year, that's a pretty good body of work that you can at least get out there. And these days, it's so easy to get your stuff out there. It's like, you know, Instagram or YouTube or whatever. Really doesn't matter if anybody's paying attention yet or not. Eventually, they will catch on. Eventually, you will start getting a following because if you look at anybody who's been a successful YouTube influencer or YouTube star, how many videos do they have up online, right? Like if you start counting through the people that are really successful at it, you're talking hundreds or thousands of videos. And when you look at the scope of their career, it might be eight or 10 years long at the most. But look at how much they've accomplished in that eight or 10 years versus that guy who's like waiting for the perfect amount of money and the perfect situation to make that one project. Persistence is key and it will always win. Always. The best skill to learn is to adapt. There's lots of versions of this saying where it's like, If you're the smartest person in the room, you need to find another room. You might be comfortable with how you work or how you produce things, but you're not expanding your horizons. You are not growing as a professional. You are not pushing the limits of your creative abilities. When you get introduced to people who are in completely different disciplines than you, those people can influence you to start going and pursuing directions that are outside of your comfort zone. And the benefit of that is you get to grow and expand your own abilities or use your abilities in ways you never even imagined. In my own case, I think of it as, you know, I had learned a bunch about audio engineering and music programming and synthesizer programming and such. A lot of my success in the video game industry, as far as being able to program interactive audio and create these magical things, was because I had this like great foundation, but I was applying it in a completely different context than how I learned it. That's learning to adapt. I know everybody kind of thinks, you know, if I could just be a master at this, it's okay. You can have a knowledge that is 10 miles wide and an inch deep. It's that versatility that makes you adaptable and somebody that people look at and say, this person can seemingly do anything. You will sometimes fail, and that is not a bad thing. Now, in our culture, especially in the United States, this is kind of a taboo subject, right? People love great success stories. They like going on social media and they just see the wins of their colleagues and their industry peers. And it seems like these people have everything figured out and nothing ever goes wrong in their life. And then you're working on a project that maybe somehow falls short for whatever reason. And it's real easy to get super depressed and want to like give up on your dreams or on your career. In general, the people who have become like young millionaires, they have started many, many businesses and failed a ton along the way. And they shut those businesses down and they took the knowledge from those failures to use as the foundation for their next business. And it got them further and further and further along. It goes back to persistence is greater than talent in a lot of ways. But this is totally true in anything. If you make a video game that maybe falls short, but has some interesting game mechanics, you can apply that. Same thing with music, same thing with filmmaking. Every time you fail, that's a learning moment. That is a moment where you are taking one step up into a higher level of production and creativity. Your network is more important than your resume. (laughs) And here at the bottom, I say, don't be maliciously competitive. The awards of fostering far outweigh being alone at the top of your little imaginary hill. If you've been in the creative industry long enough, you've definitely met those people with just these crazy egos that they just kind of feel that they're above everybody and they're not willing to work with anybody or they're trying to take control of every aspect of everything all the time. People don't like working with those kind of people. In the long run, you're going to kind of get blacklisted on that. Having a great resume is one thing. It's like, 
this person looks incredible on paper. And then you get them into the office and you're like, this person is just so arrogant and he trash talks a lot of the other employees and he's just got this impossible ego to deal with versus somebody who just comes in as a hard worker, as a team player, can set their ego aside and learn to adapt, as I said earlier. Those people go a lot further in their career overall or in times where, let's say, you are between jobs or something like that. Those kinds of networks are like, hey, you help me back at this studio and you know maybe I can get you in here or maybe we can work together on a project or something like that. Those are the people that they come for, right? The people that are giving, compassionate, those kinds of attributes. The next one here is know your worth. Now, this is really hard for the majority of creative people because we're so anxious to be able to be a part of great projects. And of course, if you're in the industry, you've come across a few ads like this, which will say like, film crew seeks technical ninja, must have five or more years experience available to work long days, weekends, Owning Film Gear A Plus, amazing three-month project with limited budget, but guaranteed IMDb credit. Great exposure. In a thread that we were talking about this exact thing, and I said, when your name does make it to IMDb, and inevitably it will if you are in the industry long enough, nothing special happens. No unexpected movie offers, no superpowers or unicorns. So when they make this kind of offer, simply reply, that's nice, but my rate is whatever your rate is. Now let's create something amazing. If they hang up on you, it was most likely never going to be amazing anyway. If you have spent your life developing your skills, that is your superpower and you are the unicorn. Now, a lot of inexperienced artists go, hey, I don't actually know what to charge for what I do. All right, this is what you call a formula for a livable wage. Your basic day rate equals whatever you actually need to pay your bills, plus your business expenses. Like if you have equipment or you need to get insurance for the project you're doing or whatever the situation is. Uh, your expertise. Factor in what you're actually paying for those college loans every month, maybe. Right. Uh, plus, if you have to travel, you got to, you know, rent a car or stay at a hotel. Whatever that number is, divide it by four, divide it by five. And that is your daily rate. And that number may appear a lot higher than you expected. You're like, oh, for real? Yeah, for real. And as you get further into the industry, you're going to find out that that's not even that much money, right? And as far as navigating your growth with that, it's a supply and demand thing. If all of a sudden you keep getting job after job after job and you have no time to yourself and you are just constantly working, raise your rate. It will thin the herd and you will have a better living for less effort. OK, I hope that helps somebody out there. And the last one that I am putting up here is when you do find success, your job is to help the next generation. There is this quote from athlete Erica Cook that says, I am not interested in competing with anyone. I hope we all make it. I love that. I love that. Because honestly, there's a lot of reasons to give your knowledge to the next generation. You're helping your entire industry grow. Everybody in every generation is standing on the shoulders of giants. That's an old, old saying, which basically means all the knowledge that we have built up to this point is the knowledge that you are continuing on. And the only way that the next generation is ever going to even know this stuff is if you take the time to share it with them and you take the time to mentor them and they will become far more proficient and produce things that are far more profound than you could possibly imagine. That is the greatest moment of a teacher, actually, is when you watch somebody present a level of mastery that you yourself have never achieved, right? Like that's when you know the magic has happened. Um, and often they will teach it back to you because again, you are always a student, right? <laughs> You've got your whole life to continue growing. It's this kind of like wonderful little loop of karma that keeps going. Uh, for me personally, I have always called that my non-competitive advantage. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope you got something out of it. Um, if you'd like to reach out to me, you can. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm also on Twitter, which is T.A. Jesse James, the alchemist Jesse James, T.A. Jesse James. Feel free to give me a holler and best of luck on your creative journey.